Now, from the Rappaport Broadcasting System is the All Sports Cable Network's Sports Central. Hi, I'm Gail Roberts. And I'm Bobby Tannen, her new co-host here on Sports Central. It's a pleasure to be working with you, Gail, and I hope to be working with you for a long, long time to come. <laughs> Baseball, basketball, football, boxing, golf, tennis, and, and, and before you know it, it's... Back to baseball again, right, Gail? Well, for those of you who are still with us, it's time to kick off our new series, The Road to Atlanta, the designated site of the 1996 Olympics. And as you can imagine, the city is rejoicing in the throes of Olympic fever. I went down there earlier this week and filed this report. Thank you. It was a big day in basketball today. Larry Bird led his green who are you Celtic team. To America. We're not even on the air. You're showing my piece on Atlanta. Oh. <laughs> That's your piece? A lot of people yelling? They sent you to Atlanta for that? Any other cheering in recent It's gonna be a series, eh? Six years of this. Oh, Bart Simpson, move over. <laughs> well, look, I'm hungry. Can I eat my lunch? How much time have you got? Shh, go ahead. 20 minutes. <laughs> Congratulations, Atlanta. Wait! You tricked me. I got my whole lunch laid out here. Well, I can fix that. Oh. sure about these two well i am and i say they're great but sir she just dumped food in his lap i know what are we running footage over this stuff for this is terrific stuff hell if you want to see atlanta go watch gone with the wind all right i'll talk to him about throwing more food uh maybe salad dressing's the way to go sure. well, look i gotta go chopper's ready you know i'm going to new york i'm gonna have lunch with merv and ava Oh, boy, she's sexy. Yeah, I love to run Green Acres. Come again? I said I love to run Green Acres. What do you got in your gum, honey? Helium? <laughs> Mr. Rappaport. I, I'm Mrs. Tannen. I'm Bobby's mother. Oh, how are you, Mrs. Tannen? Mr. Rappaport, I was hoping that you could help me to find somebody to help my boy. Well, what kind of help? Well, Bobby just isn't real good at basic living skills. He sort of needs a helper, a life helper. Oh, um, got it. Hey, kid, you want a job? Well, I have a job, sir. What's your job? Staple wire to the floor. <laughs> well, you seem to be doing a pretty good job of it. You want a promotion? This was a promotion. You bet. Stand up, son. Whoa, really? Like this? Have you ever given any thought to becoming someone's life helper? Yeah. No, what does it mean? I don't know. It's uncharted territory. That's what makes it so exciting. It is kind of exciting. What are you so excited about? You don't know what it is. I can't help it. I'm excited. When does it start? Problem, solution. Done. Oh, come here, you. There's my ride. 
Now, you be sure and have a marvelous time, sir. <laughs> That's not funny, Mac. So, oh. Everything's just one big joke to you, isn't it? No, sir. Huh? We're all here just for your amusement. No, sir. I'm here for you, sir. Good. And you come out here to the chopper and wish me a safe trip. Like you mean it. I always mean it, sir. <laughs> Hang on to something. I don't want you blowing off the roof. Man, he's the coolest guy I ever saw. Now. Rappaport, Rappaport. Now, look. I want you to make sure that Bobby stays out of trouble. Really? Yeah. Pay his bills. Okay. Drive him places. Uh-huh. I want you to be his leash. You think about him as if he's an untrained but good-hearted golden retriever. Now, you are his well-paid leash. Great. I mean, you're going to well pay me and all I got to do is keep that guy in line? It's easy. Easier said than done. Now, this is your little Bobby starter kit and here are the people that he knows. <laughs> These are the ones that he owes money to. These are the ones who want to kill him. Whoa, what did he do to the Isley brothers? <laughs> made a fool of me on the air. Well, you don't really deserve to be on the air. But if you're gonna be, maybe you should skip a few of those lunches. Oh, is that so? Well, have you ever thought about wearing glasses? Might make you look a little smarter. Have you ever thought of switching that earring to the heterosexual side? <laughs> Whoa, she's intense. Hi, I'm Baylor. Hi. I bet you need a place to live, right? Yeah, I can fix that. You're the leash, right? Uh, no, man. Oh, uh, yeah, man. Don't give me that crap. My mother hired you. <laughs> okay, but so what? I mean, I think she did it for your own good. I'm a grown man. I don't need a leash anymore. Oh, yeah? Well, if you had me 20 minutes ago, Walter Cronkite, I think I would have told you not to eat your lunch on the air. Doy. <laughs> give me that starter chip. No, come on. I need this job. Give it to me. Oh, man. Well, how are you going to get home? Oh, right. You don't have a home. Bye. <laughs> Come on, Jack. Let's wash your pants. <laughs> hey, don't stop here. Well, I have to. This is where the apartment is. See, this is the landmark building. This building's a landmark. You're going to love it. I don't want to love it. I don't even want to get near it. She lives here. Yeah, Gail. Pretty great, huh? Hey, your buddies at work, now you can be buddies at home. Hey, do you like buddy movies? Man, I do. Buddy Buddy was my favorite. Hey, maybe we can be buddies just Shut like that. Shut up, Leash, and let's get out of here. Well, we can't. Now, come on, this was the only place in your price range where you can go to the bathroom indoors. <sighs> come on. Whoa, here comes my chief to move into this cool house. There is the gate. Oh, and there is the stump. Wow, it smells like a horse died in here. One dead. <laughs> they all die in here. Do you have children? No. Lucky. I had children once. They died in here, too. No pets, no wild parties, no pacing in heavy shoes. I like a quiet building. You don't have to worry about me. I'm new in town. I haven't even had a date yet. You're not likely to get one with your earring on that side. <laughs> so, didn't I tell you? Isn't this a great place? Listen, Leash, I don't know if I can live in the same place as Gail, let alone Norman Bates' mother over there. <laughs> I can get you a great deal. Just... Mrs. Caldwell... Why don't we go back to your office and dicker? around why i need a place to live 
don't believe you. First you get a job where I work, and now you want to stay in the same place. There is something sick about you. Who says I want to stay in the same place you do? Who says I want to wake up every morning to that skull rising in the east? <laughs> oh, fine, good. Then go. Don't tell me what to do. Maybe I will stay here, maybe I won't, but either way, it's none of your business. Okay. Okay. You're right, Bobby, I'm sorry. What's the matter? Nothing. It's not your problem. What is it? It's, it's my daddy. He's 95 and he's... He's ill? He's very ill. He lives in New York in a fourth floor walk-up in Hell's Kitchen. And the other night he was walking home and some delivery boys from... Norton's market followed him and they started beating him for his social security checks. Oh. And then somebody managed to crawl out the window and they followed him out and up the fire escape. He hid from them for a while until he could jump across the roof next door, but he missed it and he fell onto the jacket sewer grating. He lived? Yes. But the doctor said with his broken collarbone and the trauma, they don't know if he'll live very long. So that's why I wanted to rent this place so I could move him up here and, and take care of, of him course. before the end. I'm sorry. I should have known. I sh I'm sorry. Take the place, you know. Get your dad up here. You know what's good for a broken collarbone? I can take the old buzzard and I can hang him from this saddle. <laughs> And then after he dies, I'll take his smelly carcass and I'll throw it out like they did the horse. Liar! I worked at Norton's Market. We don't deliver. It's written on our bags. That's right. I lied. I'm glad I lied. I would do anything to keep you from moving in here. I would lie. I would cheat. I would steal. I don't care who gets hurt. You are not moving in here. I am moving in, Gail. This is my home. I am moving into your home, Gail. Yeah. I am touching a window in your home, Gail. You are such a jerk. And I am walking across your floor, Gail. Okay, come on, I'm doing a twist in your home, Gail. Come on, come do on. The tw twist a little closer to me, chubby. <laughs> this is round one. <laughs> Oh, man, she just gave you the kiss of death from Godfather Part 2. <laughs> Remember the scene there at the, the New Year's Eve party? And Michael came up to Fredo and he goes, I know Shut up! <laughs> Help me move in. <sighs> you moved in. Guy Nick for a while now? Um, off and on. I mean, he is somebody in my life, but not totally part of my life. I mean, when he's in town, he's definitely part of my life, but when he's not... Uh, just, just say no more, okay? I, I, I am just amazed that I am having dinner with Gail Robertson. You know, it only took me six months to get up the nerve to call you, and you know, you're only the prettiest girl I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Your hair and your, your face and your and your teeth. They're only the prettiest teeth I've ever seen in my life. Do you like some That's more than anything I've ever wanted in my life. <laughs> Say, let's relax, okay? okay? I like you. I think you're absolutely adorable. Cheers. I'm coming on too strong. No, you're not coming on at all. All right. <clears throat> 
Maybe it's the wine talking already, but uh, I feel like uh, I feel like burning some logs. Uh, do you have a fireplace? Yes, I do, but it's not functional. I mean, the chimneys are all bricked up. Gail and Bobby fleeing the landmark. <laughs> Wait! Don't forget Gail's date! <laughs> Sorry, Gail. Yeah, me too. But it was funny. I know. It's okay, I was expecting to be the office joke this week. What happened to your hand? Oh, I sprained it slugging an imbecile. And then I pulled a muscle in my back, sleeping on the cot at the fire station. I don't have anything to wear on sports, Chad. Gail, I'm ready for you now. You doing something new to your hair? Oh, yeah. After I smashed my hand, a flaming shingle came crashing down on my head. <laughs> Doug, you know I used to be a quarterback. You play ball? Hell yes. I was third string, Amherst College. <laughs> right. I'll tell you, those were the days. I had chicks falling all over. <laughs> Look here at this finger. See here? I got sacked real hard in a game with Lehigh. Big old farm boy named Carter. I've never been able to straighten it out. You want to try it? Go ahead. Give it a pull. Pull your finger? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Tug on it real hard. Don't do it, Doug. You know what comes next. <laughs> Well, here we are. One big old jock sandwich, huh? <laughs> well, that's what they used to say at Amherst, anyway. You boys have a good one. Doug Williams, I'm a big fan. Thank you. Bobby Tannen. Sure. I used to watch you play. You had some nice moves out there. Well. Didn't you end up doing some time? Well, Uncle Sam and I had a problem or two, but it, uh, we're cool now. <laughs> You didn't wear an earring like that when you was in jail, did you? Not you, too. Gail Roberts. Pleasure. <laughs> Here's the book. Thank you. Here's the copy. Okay, great. Jeff, where's mine? Sorry, man. Yours got burned up in the fire. <laughs> okay, everybody. Go, team! <laughs> hey! <laughs> During his college career at Grambling, All-American Doug Williams set NCAA records for passing and touchdowns. Then, in 1979, he led the expansion Tampa Bay Buccaneers into the playoffs. After a short stint with the USFL, Doug made an amazing comeback with the Washington Redskins and was voted MVP of the 1988 Super Bowl. Hi, I'm Gail Roberts. And I'm Bobby Tannen. And tonight on Sports Chat, our guest is Doug Williams, whose new book, Quarter Black, focuses on the plight of the black quarterback in professional football. Welcome. It's a pleasure. Quarter black. Well, I'm half Cherokee myself. <laughs> See, he knows I'm kidding. Don't mind, Gail. She's a little grumpy. She woke up on the wrong side of the fire station. <laughs> what are you talking about? This animal burned my house down. Oh, don't call me an animal. You live in a stable. Well, the little baby Jesus lived in a stable. <laughs> he just stopped there to be born. He didn't take out a five-year lease and then burn the place down. You want to take this outside and I just read from my book? Oh, I, no, I'm, I'm sorry, Doug. No, I'm, I'm much sorrier than, than Gail is. The damn thing special you want to know about me or my book? I, yes, I have a question I, about I women in like the locker room. I would like to ask the first question, if Should you don't mind. naked men be doing I... interviews? <laughs> uh, in your book, you talk about your high esteem for your coach, Joe Gibbs. Could you tell us a little about that book? Well, the thing about Coach Gibbs was how thorough he was about the game. Sorry. I remember one time, just before the big game against Dallas... <laughs> What's his problem? Who knows? I'm sorry, Luke. What is you your problem? Your ball, ball, ball. 
Luther. You know, I, I was wondering what this thing was. <laughs> You know, you were talking about Coach Gibb. Thank you. Well, uh, let's go to commercial. Now. Your door is unlocked. Yeah, I know it's unlocked. That's because the lock melted. <laughs> wow, what a mess. Can I help you clean up? Oh, no. <laughs> Thanks, you've done enough already. This scarf looks pretty good. Well, that's not a scarf. It's a sleeve from a cashmere sweater. I stuck down my date's throat to keep him from biting off his tongue when you torched my home. <laughs> Jay, wasn't it? He, he seemed like a nice guy. He, he, he mingled well with our neighbors, and the firemen liked him. Please, go back to your house. I understand. You've been through a lot. You need some alone time without me. Oh, that sounds right. So I got you something uh, to keep you company during your alone time. Fried rice? <laughs> no, it's a goldfish. A goldfish? Yeah. Little goldfish. I mean, it's the least I could do, considering. Now, I got one, too, and I, and I called mine Valley, and I was thinking maybe you'd like to call yours Frankie. Oh, Frankie Valley, walk like a man. Big girls don't cry. You actually think a crappy goldfish even begins to, to make up for what you've put me through? Do you? Oh, yes, I do. You destroyed my house. And I got you a goldfish. <laughs> I'm past hitting you. Well, I think that's a nice, new, mature attitude, Gail. I've got a gun here someplace. Enjoy your fish. <laughs> Torches down my home, exposes my burn patch on television, and he gives me a fish! <laughs> hey, Valley. How you doing? This place. Okay. Yeah, I miss Frankie too, but what could I do? I had to give him away. After all, I burned down her home. <laughs> fair is fair. Lord, what is happening to me? Is this a test? Yes. This must be a test. He's ruined my life. I can't breathe. I only feel hate and rage. How did I offend you that you would send him to me? Hey, now, don't worry about Frankie. He's in a very religious home. They pray way into the evening. <laughs>